we're here in a, in, in, it's a terrific, a terrific room, and m some of you, not all of you, know what goes on in here. But this is a very special, I mean, it used to be the power plant, of course, of the city, or the generators used to be in here. But what goes on here is a school, and it's of particular interest to me, not because I, I, I wouldn't know what to do on a boat, except not to fall over. Uh, but what it represents in society today, which is uh, this blurring between white collar, blue collar, and black collar. Black collar being creative people and technology people. My feet you can't really see, but after the talk you can come closer. It's a shoe, yeah, again, uh, 3D printed. Um, it's you lightweight. See, you can see through it. Lightweight high heel with a lot of art objects uh, put on it. Really, is an experiment on uh, how refined can you design a shoe, and this is actually exhibited in MoMA uh, in New York. And people ask if this is wearable. Of course, it is. I have worn it on trade show floor for 10 hours a day for three days. We do the same thing in, what, in the materials that this group works with, with the composite materials. It's an additive technology as well. If you imagine fibers and resin, and we build these on top and stack them and mold them in tools that are made by guys uh, like, like Moldcam, and we, we build and we add rather than subtracting in general. So the, the, that, that rather than billet engineering, the taking of a large billet of a, of a metal and machining it down, we're adding materials and building up. To see where we're heading, is, uh, is very exciting. Oh, yeah. And, and, and when, with the, like the, the, the Harvard kids, yeah. with these unbelievable digital skills, and then give them a little bit of, of, of composite um, instructions, yeah. and yeah. see what they do with it, it's just, it's really cool because yeah. they do things you never imagine doing, never think about doing. Mm -hmm. The one example I want to give is um, in January that we. Um, it's a 3D system and, and then there's a robotic company that we work together to create robotic um, prosthetics that help the paraplegic people walk again. So they are paralyzed from waist down. Um, and then you got people in mathematics, physics, engineering, manufacturing, 3D printing, software engineer, product manager, you name it. There's not a single doctor in, the, in that group, right? And this is a medical problem. <laughs> but the problem was solved by people who, who, can, who imagine that they want to solve the problem of I can walk again. So from now on, you would never have to worry about that you would never be able to walk again. How great is that, right? So when we launched that, it was an Olympic uh, ski um, athlete who, in accident, mm -hmm. become um, paralyzed waist down. And we, she lives in um, Aspen, so we helped her to walk again. I mean, her smile, I, it's just like when she smiled, I feel like anything, anything you go through, any, is worth it, right? It's like that kind of contribution to humanity. I work in the wind industry, and one of the ways of, of getting um, young students engaged is, is through competitions, through challenges. Um, and it happens to be in the technology we work in, it's easy metric to measure. And, um, introduce the idea of sustainability. I think it's the great challenge of our, one of our great challenges of our time to uh, provide a sustainable energy future and, um, and have them design wind turbines, uh, a shaped blade, put it onto a fixed turbine and put it in a wind tunnel or a fan and, and measure the output of energy. And they begin to learn a lot of different scientific disciplines. I often get asked this question like, when does 3D printing gonna come home? And, and that answer is not, it's not about a question whether or not it's gonna go to your home, it's which room would you have a 3D printer? Is it in your kitchen to print food or is it in your garage to, to do, do it yourself? Today you can do, you can already print chocolate. I spent a lot of time in the chocolate factory. It's intoxicating, I can tell you. I think in a couple of years, you will see 3D printer as a home appliance in your kitchen. So if you kitchen. want to win MasterChef, you better be studying computers. <laughs> and uh, you, let's put this all in perspective. That sounds like the future. In 20 years, it'll sound like really past. old, past yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be like it's your gonna, microwave it's, oven or it's not, conviction. Yeah. This is, yeah. uh, anything we talk about now is just is still so primitive.
My definition of learning is remembering what you're interested in. And if you make things interesting and encourage people to be interested in things, people will learn. It's not short-term memory to take a test like playing gin rummy. It's remembering what you're interested in. Let's have a drink of wine. You've been a lovely audience. Thank you very much. <laughs>